Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's Connection Diary. I am Robin Anselmi, CEO of Conversant, and I'm joined today by my dear friend and colleague, Kel Delaney. Hi, Kel. Hello, everyone. Hi, Robin. At Conversant, one of the things that we are continuously focused on is how do we create work that is consistent with the nature of being human. So often we look at that through the lens of connecting with others and how do we actually enlist support in an organization, get groups of people to do work together in a way that's consistent with all the things that we know about human beings and how we interact in communities and individually. And today I wanna talk with Kel about the notion of rest, which is also consistent with the way of being human. I asked Kel to join me specifically, this is not a topic that I personally am very good at. Uh, and Kel has spent a lot of time researching rest and in particular intentional rest. And so I thought that would be a great conversation for us to have as we approach the end of the calendar year. So, Kel, when I when you think about rest and its role in organizational life, what comes to mind for you? Well, I'll start with the nature of being human. I love how you frame that because you know there's a whole history behind how we've gotten to where we are now and how we work that is not consistent with the nature of being human. We actually become mechanical. We're trying to duplicate machines, do what machines do, and we're not machines. We actually need sleep. We need to inhale and exhale. You know, I, I've mentioned this many times, but uh, our culture has become all inhale and no exhale. So that balance, those rhythms, that's what makes us human. Those back and forth, um, that rhythm of nature is human. And so to me, when I look at organizations and how we are now treating each other and ourselves even more so, as robots or as machines or being hard on ourselves if we can't go forever. Um, I actually think we're, we're all running as fast as we can in this race down a dead end path. Um, one of the things I've found is it, actually, if you look at the nature of being human, if you look at our biology, we do the best work that we're the most creative when we take our rest time as seriously as our work time. Rest is actually part of good work. It is work and we need to be committed to it just as seriously. And so when you think about rest in the context of how we do that, right? Get, again, the marriage of the practical and the profound. So what are the practical things that you've seen really work well inside of organizational life, knowing that we have deadlines, we have people dependent on us, we have hours to track and projects to complete and milestones to hit. So how do you weave rest in, in ways that are natural that we could all learn from? Well, I think, you know, for, for me, there are two primary avenues in. One is the body and one is the mind or our mental side of things. The body takes, when we work, our, work out or work really hard, the body does take need a rest that is less, cha like less challenging. Um, and there is a body component at work that we need balance. So walking is one of the absolute best things to do. It stimulates blood flow. It gets oxygen throughout your system. It stimulates your creative brain. Uh, I think most people, most of you out there can probably recognize moments in the shower or on a walk or in nature where you just, you have those aha moments where suddenly something you were thinking about a couple of days ago, you go, oh, oh, I know what to do about that. And that is because stepping away, taking that break, getting into the body, doing something physical actually stimulates the parts of us that makes us most creative, that draws the new connections versus just repeating the old. Um, and that's where the joy and the new, new ideas come from. The other great thing about walking or moving the body is when we're walking with someone, even if it's on a phone, it stimulates a part of us that wants to connect with one another. And so we collaborate naturally without even having to put much effort in. So that's another big thing. And then just practically throughout your day, getting up every 25 minutes to stand up and walk to get a tea or do a couple squats or push-ups against the wall or anything you like to do that gets your body moving for a few minutes will keep you refreshed and it actually counters the lethargy that comes with just sitting all day long um, and it also brings a lot of mental focus and then the mental side the mind actually does not benefit from shutting off vegging in front of the tv and watching netflix 
It actually keeps you tired or makes you more tired. The mind needs variety to be refreshed. So deep focus on one thing and then taking a break and then focusing on a hobby or some other bit of work, that actually will refresh you. That is rest. And the great thing from a productivity perspective is in the meantime, the project you were working on first while you now switch to something else to focus on, your mind is working on it in the background. And that's once again, where those creative ideas and aha moments emerge from. And so the best thing for, for people from a mental mind perspective is actually to find other hobbies and other things that you can engage in that bring in a new way of thinking. And that variety will leave you refreshed and more energized and joyful. Uh, and it'll bring a lot more creativity to your work because now you're exposing yourself to different things that then in the background, your mind will start to combine in new ways. Beautiful. I, we do walking meetings often, you and I. Uh, we had one last week. They really are such an easy, simple thing that we forget is possible, right? I can grab my phone and walk out the door and you can do the same, even though we are I don't know how many miles apart, uh, and still be sort of together in that conversation and in that meeting uh, virtually. So one other, one, other, one other thing, Robin, actually, that you have me thinking about that I also think is really important, and it's tangentially related to those two, is having limits. Mm -hmm. So if you, we all have endless to-do lists. So if you end your day, even if you say, all right, that's the end of my day, and those things are, you're carrying them around through your evening with your family or your kids or your friends or whatever you're doing, and you can't let them go, you're not actually getting the full benefits of the rest during that time. So even starting a simple practice of figuring out at the beginning of your day, what is it that if I've accomplished these three things or these four things, I can feel good enough about my day that I can let it go and fully turn that off and focus on other aspects of my life then you, you access the full benefit of the rest in the other times of your life. You'll sleep better. And then when you show up the next day, you're re-energized and you're bringing all of yourself, you know, the full human to your work, as opposed to a partial bit that tends to end up in a negative cycle because now you're tired, you don't do as much, and then you are more stressed the next night, you sleep even worse. And it's not till the weekend that you actually catch up on work as opposed to getting the rest on the weekend you need. Well, and to that end, we're actually going to create internal to conversant a uh, refresh challenge here at the end of the year. Like many of you, we are a little slower right at the very end of the year because so many clients are on holiday, um, but we're still working and in, in the offices. So our home offices. So we're going to, Kel and I have created a refresh challenge that we're sharing in the notes below with all of you. Feel free to edit it where um, I'm going to award very valuable prizes to those to whoever gets the most points. Um, and you can see there's a, a variety of things on there, everything from cleaning your office to reading something new to listening to a podcast on connection. If you haven't checked that out yet is one we highly recommend. Um, and writing about it, right? So giving yourself those moments of reflection. So uh, we hope that you give the refresh challenge a try for yourself. You may have to alter it to fit your organization and the needs that you have, but we'd love to hear how that goes for everybody. In the meantime, uh, happy holidays, and we look forward to seeing you in 2022. Good luck, everybody. <laughs>